Good morning. My name's Lorene. Welcome to Books at the Bottom of the Stairs. Today I'm going to talk to you about a new to me classic. It is Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell. And um, not only was this a good book to read, but it was a fun book to research. So Elizabeth Gaskell is a new author to me. I don't, I've heard of her other book, um, Wives and Daughters, but I might also have been mixed up with a D.H. Lawrence book. But uh, she's a charming author. I really enjoyed uh, reading this book. And let me tell you a little bit about her. She was born in 1810, died at 55 years of age. Leo, like Cleo here likes to get in the way of the books. She wrote novels and short stories, and she was the first biographer of Charlotte Bronte. And in fact, Charlotte Bronte asked her to be the biographer. So they had a fairly, um, fairly good friendship prior to the biography, but as the work went on, they became even closer friends. Um, let's see, her other well-known novels are North and South, and uh, there's another one that I missed, but I believe that these have been adapted to TV. So I'm going to see if I can track those down. I um, We don't really watch TV very much, so it's quite often download. So see how successful we are with that. I Someone told me, I think, that Judy Dench was in one of them, but and I love Judy Dench. So I hope that's true. Anyhow, um, this book, Cranford, was originally uh, published in installments in the, I guess it was a like, sort of a magazine periodical called Household Words, and that was edited by Charles Dickens. And this uh, was about two years worth of installments. And then in 1853, it was brought together as a book. And I believe the original edition, editing and foreword were by Charles Dickens. So she was in that group of, of um, rather prolific, um, 19th century. I'm never good at that, you know, it's like you always have to go if it was in the 1800s, it's the 19th century. So uh, that was her background. And the book, as a physical thing, is just so cute. Like it's, it's just the size of my hand, just from the same um, publishers as Dracula that I mentioned before. And that um, blum, blum, blum is Macmillan. Isn't it? Yeah, I had that written down. Macmillan, Pan Macmillan, I believe. Now, I had a terrible time with the website. I, I'm sure that if you're one of these people that doesn't have chronic bad luck with uh, Google searching and whatnot, you'll do fine. But if you're like me, tending towards the ineptness, I found it hard to get the entire listing of all the offerings for Pan Macmillan, which is their classics library. And they do have lots of modern books, but they aren't in this little book format. So um, if you want the, the older things, um, Dracula or, oh, uh, let me think, there's some by Charles Dickens and so, just those kinds of authors. And I love these. They're so easy to read. The text is exactly the right size. Um, there's a little bit, it's a little bit crowded in terms of the distance between the letters and this, this um, lines, but uh, I don't know, I, I did okay with it. Now this particular book, let me see if I can get you a better one, has these sweet little drawings. Okay, so let me see if I can get that up close enough to you. In, let's hope for the best. So this is a part of the story where a very elderly, elegant woman is being taken in her little, um, I forget what those were called, you know, it was just for one or two people and the men uh, had to carry it along, didn't have any wheels and, and you'd be inside and you'd, yeah, it's, I guess you were elegant being bopped around like that. And she's off to go to a very important tea and gets completely, um, rattled in terms of her headgear and all that. So part of the charm of the story. Um, what is this book about? Let's talk about that. It is practically structureless, a brief sketch, uh, sketches strung together with easy grace and satirical tone of voice as um, critiqued by A.W. Ward, whoever he is when he's at home. So um, 
I would say that's a fairly good assessment. We have got a young narrator, Mary, who goes to visit some elderly ladies. Now elderly, of course, in those days is a bit of a different thing than you and I would think of as elderly. There are about 20 characters in the cast who, who circle through one way or another. There are uh, servants, there are servants, beaux or husbands, there are visitors to the community, there are the main characters, there's Mary of course as the narrator and her father comes in at a certain point. An old love interest reappears after decades of having been absent. Uh, there's all kinds of of um, interactions and the flow of the story is really just time through life, spring, summer, winter, that kind of thing, but there are a couple of years worth of stories. And I think Elizabeth Gaskell, when she was writing this originally, didn't really have a plot in mind. She was was making sketches of this imaginary village that's built on um, a village that she attended when she was a child. So she's uh, done some really wonderful observing of people. Um, I think a couple of videos back I spoke about I'm going to blow it now, Miss Bunkle's book and Miss Bunkle Gets Married. Similar in the sense that they are observers of their community and the people of it and so they start to tell stories as they see people's foibles and and charming spots and little blisters and warts and, and they bring them all together into a bridge game story where um, for instance, all the ladies are really kind of down and out in terms of their wealth and so have decided without actually really talking about it that a certain brand of um, cookie is just de rigueur but if you were to serve a different kind of brand then you know a little bit of snottiness would creep into looking down on the person who'd served the wrong brand of cookies but <laughs> actually none of them can afford the cookies. so. It's funny in that these ladies are very, very committed to their hierarchy, their social hierarchy, and um, there's definitely the dominant people in the pecking order. And one of them, uh, let me see now, is Mrs. Deborah Jenkins. And she, sorry, Miss, it's important, Miss versus Mrs. She has a younger sister, Mattie Jenkins, who is, I would say, the primary character um, that Mary goes to visit. And Deborah, her older sister, has had many an opinion on many a thing. In fact, there's almost nothing that Deborah hasn't expressed an opinion on forcefully. And does it in such a way as to make sure that her opponents, as it were, know their place and that she is the arbiter of what is uh, correct and incorrect and and within the correct and incorrect there's layers of incorrect and and correct but she passes away and uh, Maddie has been so trained or cowed or what have you as to continue to try and keep up the standards of her elder sister but as the years go by her capacity for that diminishes as does her her income, but so the story is around her trying to keep up appearances. There really isn't a plot, as uh, the, crit the uh, critic, when it was first released, mentions beyond these visits and the gradual um, decline of fortunes, I guess. And of course, change is taking place. Railroad cars are coming into uh, um, not their particular community, but it, it's known about things like. The newspaper has changed in format. Maybe they're using a different folding system or what have you. And so it's like, oh my gosh, can we continue to read this newspaper? They've made a change. Um, there's quite a lot of funny stuff happening around hats. Um, going, There's indoor hats and there's hats that you want to wear out as in um, wear them instead of your new hat because you want to get as much life out of the old hat as possible. So wear out as into gets more and more tatty as time goes by. Um, it's just really, there's all kinds of charming details in this uh, village. And I guess the part that I liked about it is that, uh, well, I was reading it during the pandemic, so I didn't really have to pay a lot of attention to things, but I, it was a gent, it was a gentle, sweet, humorous, 
vision of people. There's there's a kindness in this book. And I do like that from time to time. Not a soppy, sentimental kind of thing, but just um, affection. Affection for the characters and affection for the town as well. A little bit of nostalgia. Uh, a little bit of nostalgia doesn't hurt a skeptic like me. We have to remember that there are people who do, do have softer hearts than I do. Um, Yes, I just, I truly, truly enjoyed this. And I have the other book um, on hold at the bookstore. Hopefully it's coming in soon. North and South is the one I'm after next, which I think is quite a different story because I believe it follows a more uh, industrial town, not as idyllic or picaresque. And um, I have not encountered Wives and Daughters, but this uh, Pan Macmillan doesn't have it in its collection. And I thought it would be nice to try and and just keep a bunch of books in this little format. I do occasionally like to have a little collection where everything is um, similar. So that's Cranford House. I think it's just a charming classic book. If you're uh, someone who really likes to read the classics, I think Elizabeth Gaskell is definitely an author to add to your list. And I also like that she's female. I mean, isn't that just a charm? I mean, there's lots and lots of male authors, as we all know. Uh, so it's nice to have a little change. The second book I wanted to talk to you about, I'm in the middle of, and it's also a little book, also charming. It's called The Sound of a Wild Snail Eating by Elizabeth Tova Bailey. The author, it's, it's a um, memoir. It's from a very short period of time in Elizabeth Tova Bailey's life when she's quite ill and someone brings her a violet with a snail in it and the snail is actually part of the gift because the friend has thought you know well you know if all you can do is lie there you might as well have a buddy who's lying there too and not that this was said in the book certainly a lot smaller than a sloth <laughs> but they're about the same speed but what ends up happening in this book is that the uh, the author starts to really pay attention to the snail and the snail's life. And I don't know if you knew this, but snails have teeth. So we get to find out about this particular snail and its environment. And I'm only on uh, chapter six. They're very short chapters. I think the whole book is under, yeah, it's under about 180 pages. And um, I'm really enjoying it. It too is a gentle, um, mm. gentle to oneself in the sense that the author to herself is uh, being kind to both herself and the snail in a time of really s deep sadness and illness and the there's humor here and um, of a soft gentle kind I do like a good laugh aloud but this is a different kind of humor it has illustrations as well and when um, I finished the book I'll talk about it a little bit more because I, there's so much about snails I had no idea um, but there's some really jo very lovely lovely little pencil lines in here of course not now that I'm talking about it I can't find it um, and uh, you know what I'm not sure if the author illustrated or not so this is the winner of the John Burroughs medal which I think is a nature writing and it was recommended through uh, Olive at a book Olive I'll link that down below and uh, she's a very good blogger um, in booktube on nature writing and she particularly likes memoir nature writing so if she's got a lot of great recommendations if that's up your alley so uh, I think this was a solid recommendation and uh, I hope you enjoy it if you choose to uh, pick it up I did get it from my local bookstore and it's running around $23 Canadian and I think it's a it's just a nice little addition to your library. I hope all your reading dreams and adventures continue to come true and I'll see you next week. Bye bye.